Hey everyone, how are you doing? It's Mary Fame Brent with a LinkedIn Bakery serving up bite-sized tips so you don't get overwhelmed. You can find me here at my Facebook Live show on the first and third Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time or Standard Time, depending what month. I am super, super excited for tonight's show. Why? Because I have Mike Alton here. Uh, Mike and I, we met online first, um, and then we connected on LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. Mike is with Agora Pulse, because I always yeah. want to say plus, Agora Pulse, and um, Social Media Hat. And I'm not going to spill all the beans, but I um, I heard Mike on Stephanie Lou show. If you guys know Stephanie Lou, I call her my mini course muse, uh, my Facebook live muse, because definitely if it wasn't mm -hmm. for Stephanie, I would not be here. So high five to my girl, Steph. And... So Mike and I had, you know, we met online. I saw him on Stephanie's show and I, you know, you have that fear factor, right? Like, Ooh, should I ask him? Should I? What, what if he says no? It's all good, right? So I asked Mike to be on my show and he said yes. So I'm, I'm very thankful that you took the time out because I know you have two beautiful girls and you're in what state again? I'm over in Missouri. I'm in St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah. So, you guys, yeah. it's not 7 o'clock his time. What is it, 9? <laughs> it is 9. So, thank yeah. you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate <laughs> that. And um, what's really cool is that Mike and I got to meet in person in June 30th at uh, Social Media Day San Diego. Right. Did I get that right? Yeah. <laughs> There's so many different ones. So. Uh -huh. I'm really excited that we had the opportunity to actually meet. We took some pictures and that you're here tonight. Now I'm going to check and see who is on. So we've got Paula here and Kimberly. Kimberly is the one who does the HIPAA security stuff. So mm -hmm. I was kind of going over my, like, who said they were going to join us. So you guys definitely, you know what, let us know that you're here. Say hi, give us a thumbs up, a high five, some hearts, whatever you want to do. Just no poop, okay? No emoji poops. <laughs> um, so we're going to get started here. Um, I have tons of questions for you, Mike, and my audience does because they were like throwing out the questions in the event over there on my Facebook page. So I thought we would start with this question. Are you guys ready? What does, blog? are you ready? What does <laughs> blog mean? Like, can I you define that? I love this question. It's such a good question, such a good place to start because as we were talking about before we even started, it means different things to different people. Oh. And the key thing that I want to say to all of you listening right here is that your blog, it's just written content. That's okay. all it is. Don't think of it like it's a personal journal. Don't think of it like it's someplace you have to publish on a regular basis because those models of blogging don't apply to probably anybody who's watching this video. <laughs> if everybody watching this video is an entrepreneur, that means your blog is just a place for you to put written content, and we'll talk about what that content looks like and how long, and we'll answer all those questions. But the whole point is to have written content that your audience can find okay. that's going to help them. Okay. Right. Great. So you could call it articles. If it makes you uncomfortable, I don't like to blog. I don't well, want to be a blogger. But you're not. Right. <laughs> you're a small business owner and you're creating content. So one of the things when I hear blogger, I think of, now nobody get mad, mommy bloggers, you know, yeah. they're blogging about health or recipes. Yeah. Does anyone else, when you guys, when you hear the word blog, what do you think of? Do you think of articles and resources or do you think of like recipes and mommy bloggers. I don't know cuz that's kind of what I think of. Is is that how blogging started? What does blog yes. stand for? Do the letters stand for something? Yeah, yeah, they stand for web log. And they go back 10 years, 10 plus years. You would have a website and on your website you would keep a log or a personal journal of what it is you were doing. So you would web log and that eventually became blog. blog you would blog as a verb it, i hate words that go from being nouns to verbs nobody should ever do that <laughs> so you would blog about what you were doing the experiences you, that you had the stories you had to share which that's fine but nobody watching this besides me is a blogger you aren't. You're not bloggers. No. You're business owners. Yes, and we want to know. You want to do content yes. 
marketing. That's what you want to do. Content marketing, which is why a lot of times when I'm doing these shows and I'm writing my own articles, I talk about content. Uh, it's a very technical sounding word, but it's the most appropriate word because content can be video, and it mm-hmm. can be audio, and it can be imagery, and it can be written. Yeah, so Kimberly here, when I said, what, what does blog mean to you? She said curated content. Mm. So thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your comments. Um, okay, so I think we're all clear. On, so you're, what makes you a blogger? <laughs> well, what makes me a blogger is that I create content for the sake of the content. I write because I enjoy writing. I write because I've created ways of monetizing that content specifically. Whereas if you are doing coaching, that's your business, right? right? If you don't do coaching, you are not making money. And the the reason for creating content is to market your coaching. So it's a right. subtle difference in perspective okay. as to why it is that you're creating your content. I would love to write, and I'll get that not everybody else is like that way, but I really love to write. If I have to go a couple of weeks because of scheduling and busyness and I don't have time to write, I'm like going you through withdrawal? a trial. shake Oh, bit. my gosh. Yeah. Because I really enjoy it, you know. That's that's part of what I do, not just for fun, but it, it it's calming to me. Mm. It's uh, self satisfying. I feel like I've accomplished something when I spend a Saturday afternoon and and I write four or five thousand words on a topic. Wow. I'm really happy about that. Uh, so it's important to me. But that's that's me. Right. That's not anybody. Of, that's, that's you. Not any of you. <laughs> um, I like to write, but. Um so some people know I'm dyslexic. So like writing, it takes me longer to do because I have a lot of thoughts and I got to get them out on the paper and then I have to go back and make sure is the verb in the right place? Did I describe it after? Because, you know, as a dyslexic, we swap things around and we put things right. in the wrong place. And then I swear I'm a little ADD, you know, who isn't these <laughs> days, right, with social media. Um, and so like the, the brain is always going. So for I like to write. But it's a little, uh, it takes a little longer for me to get a yeah. polished something out there. So I just, I just say that my style is casual and conversational. And I think that that helps me not get so terrified of writing. So we have some questions over here. Can I be a blogger and write personal stories? Is that content? Now, Laura is a career coach with military spouses here mm-hmm. in San Diego. So she mm-hmm. helps, uh, military spouses find jobs because we all know, Moving around, being a military spouse, yeah. it's really difficult. So she works for the Rosie yeah. Network here, which is a great network. So That's awesome. Would the personal and stories tie into the career coaching or what? It, it, generally speaking, the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, in her case, it's an absolute yes. I say generally because it does depend on the business. In her case, absolutely. I would imagine that her customers um, are, and her potential customers uh-huh. are almost always going to be interested in reading about other people mm. who've been in the same situation as them and how did they get through it. And the only extra tip I would put on top of that is make the customers the hero of those uh. stories. Always. Not you. Right. Not that you aren't, uh, say Kimberly, you know, not that you aren't necessarily doing that, but for anybody else who's listening, uh, whenever you want to share a story, uh, particularly about your customers, if, if it's a story about yourself, well then, what are you going to do? But if you're talking about your customers, whenever possible, it's not that your business came in and swooped in and saved them. Right. Day, right. Your business was there to help them and guide them. They save the day. They're the hero because right. everybody reading, they want to be the hero. And they can't be you, but they could be yes. that person, your client. Yes. Yes. Good tip. I hope that you guys all got that one down. Let's see. Um, Kimberly just says, I haven't blogged in two weeks and she's feeling weird herself. So <laughs> Kimberly obviously <laughs> likes to blog as well. Um Okay, great. So we know what a blog is, who can be a blogger. Um, it, it can be the personal stories. And I, so my best writing is when it comes from the heart and when it's personal. Um, and when I can weave that into business, that's when I have yep. the biggest success in any articles that I put out or videos that I put out. So 
good to know I can take those personal stories. Oh, um, absolutely. And in fact, one of the things that I tell people often, particularly if they're struggling with what to write about and they're spending a lot of time, uh, write what's already in your head okay. or in your heart because yeah. it's there and it will come out a lot easier once you get started mm-hmm. versus the research paper yeah. where <clears throat> you want to teach somebody about a topic that maybe you don't know that much about. And right. so now you're going to spend hours and hours and hours <laughs> digging up statistics and finding quotes like you're in college. Uh, I don't want, I don't want to read that. <laughs> right. I don't want to write it. That's for darn sure. Yeah. Um, I don't want to write it either. <laughs> thank you. Um, so do you want to tell, you know, one of my biggest questions, and I think my audience when in our Facebook event is, so what does blogging do for you? Like, I know that you have a story. Now, you haven't told it yet because I want to be excited. I want to find out right now here live with all of you guys what Mike's story is and what blogging did for him. So let's just get like right into that. Share with us because I'm super excited. I'm like sitting on the edge of my my couch here. Um, I'm like, okay, I want to hear this. Well, it's. I think it's funny. I don't know if you'll think it's funny. I didn't like to write. <gasps> Oh, Which is do yeah, I'm like what? What? Yeah, in in I, high I understand. school, I know in high school, sophomore year of high school, I was failing English. So there's hope for all of failing us. Failing English, so there's hope <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, and now I'm I'm gonna date myself. This was 1990, before there were WordPress and all that kind of stuff. This was this is before Windows, and so. My English teacher brought my parents in and said, hey, we got to do something here. Your little boy is failing English. And I'm like, why? What's the problem? And she said, well, he'll turn in a writing assignment, and I'll put notes on it. And the whole class, they get their writing assignments back with notes. Uh-huh. They have to go back and fix Correct it. Correct them. And then turn it back in. And these were handwritten, you know, five, six pages. And I just wouldn't do it because I can't stand to physically write. Right. But my English teacher, Mrs. Braun, love Mrs. Braun, she said, Mr. and Mrs. Alton, you should buy him a word processor. Oh, because get if you out. give him a word processor, <laughs> he can print it out and I can make corrections and then he can go back and he can do all the corrections on the computer. We never owned a computer. So this was our first computer that they bought because of my sophomore high school teacher, uh, wow. WordPress. 3.1 or something like that on DOS 4. DOS. And I went from failing English to acing English and, and went to honors junior and advanced placement senior English wow. and, you know, aced English in high school because I have a very good command of language and it was the handwriting the time. Yeah. that was a problem for me. So, uh, fast forward. A couple decades, and now I've you know I've gone on to college. I've gone through some careers, and I've I started my own business, and it was an internet marketing business. Okay, and I was creating content to build that internet marketing business, and it wasn't working. Mm-hmm. I was not reaching the right audience, but I found out in that process that I really liked to teach. I really liked to communicate through blog content. So I started the social media hat in 2012 just as a place to put that content, a place Ah. to talk about Facebook and Twitter and blogging uh, and anything else that was really content. Were you, were you working in that social media space um, before you started social media hat or you were just like interested, like it was a hobby in the interest of yours? Well, it was, it was something I was doing to try to sell websites and that wasn't working. Right. People who wanted to learn about Twitter back in 2011 weren't interested in buying websites. And so there was a disconnect between what I was writing about and the audience I was trying to reach. So when I started the social media hat, I didn't know what it was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to monetize it. Um, I I sold my time as a consultant. Um, I tested all kinds of passive monetization things. But the the real point, I'm getting around to the, the end of the story, is that as a result of the content that I was creating, I built a reputation. Okay. I generated awareness of myself as an author, as a teacher, as a consultant. I started doing speaking. I started doing live video like this. And that turned into a full-time job as the chief marketing officer of a big company 
making six figures for that particular company. And I kept blogging on the side. I kept writing about the tools that I loved. I was writing about Hootsuite all the time, and Hootsuite loved it. Hootsuite would republish my work all the time. I ended up taking all the stuff that I wrote about Hootsuite and put it together, added some more material, and published a book. I wrote the book on Hootsuite. And then a couple of years ago in San Diego at Social Media Marketing World, I was introduced to this guy named Emmerich who happens to be the CEO of Agora Pulse, who was a competitor of Hootsuite. And at the time, Hootsuite and I, we weren't homies mm. anymore. No. So I was really interested. No BFFs? In what, no. <laughs> no. When, <laughs> when a brand issues a um, cease and desist order because they don't want you publishing your book, that's not a good thing. Mm. Yeah. And that's a whole other story. Who knows what oh, that wow. was about. But anyways... And obviously, I published it anyway. So, oh, anyways. good for you! <laughs> <laughs> but I met Emmerich, and Emmerich showed me a Gora Pulse. I was like, "Oh, this is awesome! This is easy to use." He was just showing me on on his phone how easy it was to uh, keep up with Twitter and keep up with my Facebook page and so on. So I switched gears and started writing about Agora Pulse a lot. Wow. And, and Emmerich loved it, of course. And I became an ambassador for Agora Pulse. And then spring of this year, actually, we started talking uh, late last year about me working for Emmerich full time. And he hired me in February right before Social Media Marketing World this year so that I could go and be the brand <gasps> evangelist for Agora Pulse. I'm now in charge of Agora Pulse's ambassador program, which means that sounds I, fascinating. I go to conferences now all the time. I have to go to Paris three times a year. I know uh, that's sad. Your life is rough. <laughs> and I'm talking to social media professionals all day long. I love it. It's a dream job. Oh my gosh, it sounds amazing. I'm sitting here going, what do I love that I use that I just want to start blogging about because then I want them to hire me? I'm like seriously yeah. like, oh, that's that's a huge bombshell, you guys. Okay, I'm going to have to take a moment here because I'm seriously got all these apps and programs <laughs> going through my head going, which two do I want to just tackle? I love yeah. that story. And just by sharing your love and your, your insight, your experience about using Agora Pulse, that led to that relationship and they saw yes. what you were doing. So it's all about just being authentic and true, really, at yeah, the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, because I know not everybody listening is going to want to follow that kind of path, which I totally understand. If you've got your own business, you know, you're not necessarily dreaming of working for somebody else. But some of the lessons are, like you said, you know, creating great content mm -hmm. and pursuing relationships and being open yes. to whatever kinds of opportunities those might come. They might become partners. They might become uh, influencers for you. Uh, they might hire you to be an influencer for them. You never know. I love that word opportunity. So I was just talking to one of my clients today and she has, you know, she's pivoting in her mm -hmm. career, uh, looking to leave this company and get into the online marketing. So we're looking at internships and different ways for her to do that. And she's got some different opportunities. And she was asking, what do you think about this one opportunity? Um, it's very particular. It's more of an eight to five thing, but there's a, it's at an online marketing company with potential to do some social media posting, things like this. And my answer to her and my answer to everyone listening, always be open to a conversation. You don't have to take it. As I told her, be open to the opportunity. Have that conversation. Meet with that person. Learn more about the opportunity. And then remember, as I told her, it's not for life. Because she's like, yeah. oh, the 8 to 5. I'm like, maybe it's an 18-month gig and you get all that experience you need and then you jet. So I love that you said, you know, always be open to that conversation and to that opportunity because we don't ever, we don't know where it's going to lead. Like you said, the influencer, a job, a client, a speaking gig, right? Mm -hmm. now, I mean, I could go on and on about the, the role that relationships have played in my career. The reason I met Emmerich okay. is because I was introduced to him by Peg Fitzpatrick. Peg yeah. is a big time social media blogger. She works with Guy Kawasaki. She's written the book, uh -huh. The Art of Social Media. And she's a dear friend of mine and has been since about 2013. Right after I started doing the right kinds of content in the right way, I met, I met Peg and we started reading each other and helping each other out. You know, just like Jen and Steph and I were always helping each other out. You, d you never know. 
you know, back then Google Plus was a thing. And I'm like, right. Google Plus. Google Plus. Yeah, Google Plus was a thing. So Jen was just starting her career. Jen Herman, for those of you watching, I, she was Jen's just starting trends. her. She was just starting her career as an Instagram expert, which she is amazing, right? So 2013, I don't use Instagram. I don't write about Instagram back then. So if people had Instagram questions, I said, you got to talk to Jen. Right. And I would share her stuff. And she was just getting started. So she was super, super appreciative to me for the support that I was giving her. Fast forward three years, four years, I'm now back at Social Media Marketing World this year. And I'm in a new career. I'm trying to meet people. I'm yeah. trying to be an evangelist for Girl Pulse and make connections. She's been speaking there. This is, what, her third or fourth year speaking yeah. there now, right? So she's now introducing me to everybody uh. she knows, right? She's letting me tag along <laughs> to the speaker dinner. And uh. I'm not a speaker at Social Media Marketing World. I have never spoken at that conference. And I might never speak at that conference. People think I'm a speaker. Thanks to people like Jen. Uh, so it's all about those relationships. Absolutely. I'm a, a big believer in nurturing the relationships, finding the right relationships. So Jen has been instrumental, like helping me. She came on my Facebook show and she is just fabulous. I just saw her at the Facebook community boost event. Yeah. You know, yeah. Stephanie Liu, Alex Cameron, Jen, Kendra, Heather Ryan said, like, I, I'm like, I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh. I'm like rubbing elbows with these women that I'm like, wow, they're where I want to be one day, I think. Or I just mm -hmm. want to go be a brand ambassador because <laughs> that, I'm a brand ambassador already for local things. But I was like, yeah. wait, I want to get paid for it. There, there's yeah. ways. So somebody has a question. Besides, one question is, do you need an assistant? Hint, hint. I'll let you see that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? So... <laughs> Yeah, um, Kimberly says, love to hear tips about becoming a brand ambassador. Mm. Do you have tips about that? I do. I do. And, and I just want to reiterate, everything that we've been talking about so far was made possible because I created content. So tip Nobody number one. Nobody would have known right? who I was. So tip what? number one is create yeah. content, relevant Whether it's video content. or audio okay. or written. Whatever's going to work best for you, okay. create content because that's how you're able to share your knowledge and your personality. Exactly. Right? And provide so that's value. That's how people are going to know you. Yeah. Always provide value. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So now when it comes to being a brand ambassador, uh, a lot of it's being open to opportunities and a lot of it's creating content. Okay. But it's also understanding which brands might be open to that kind of arrangement. Okay. Because it's new. Influencer marketing is new. Brand ambassadors are new. This isn't affiliate marketing. Right. It has some aspects and some similarities to affiliate marketing, to be sure. But we're not just paying people to share links right. and send them a commission check based on sales, because that's just pure affiliate marketing. We have partnerships uh, with key people in the industry, like Kim Garst and Ian Cleary mm -hmm. and Jen and stuff. They're, they're all ambassadors uh, for, for Agora Pulse, which means we get to create fun projects together. Oh, I, I approach Ian and say, hey, you know, we want to build a resource that's you know, going to be the number one resource for this. Is that something you want to get them, you know, be part of. And they're like, yeah, sign me up. Um, you know, right now we're doing a series of Facebook live videos and we're just asking our ambassadors to come on a show for 30 minutes and share their top five favorite tools. Oh, and of course, the pulse is in there, right? But they're creating a 30 minute video, which we're then turning that video into blog content. There you go. Which it's some repurposing and we're having them publish that blog content on their blogs. So you're expanding the reach there. So we're expanding the reach. Yeah. Yep. I love that. I love repurposing and expanding your reach by collaborating. So you really <laughs> hit on like three of my favorite things. Uh, <laughs> seriously, you know, brand ambassador. So I was a brand ambassador for Hera Hub, which um, mm -hmm. Hera Hub is a local. Co-working uh, space, right? Yes, for female entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's where I first, um, one of the first business investments I made. And I always say, like even today, it's the best investment I made that community mm -hmm. and having that professional space and the classes that they offer just, it was awesome. And so I didn't know, uh, I think it was last summer about a year ago, they went through and they were watching our, 
they had people that were watching our Twitter, our LinkedIn, and our Facebook posts. And I was always posting I was there, and I was posting this and that. And they handpicked like 10 of us to be their first brand ambassadors. So that's pretty cool because we already love them. We already yeah. shout their praises. Now they yes. wanted to like give us some benefits for it and create official brand ambassadors. So yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I do. I look for people who are already talking about my brand. Exactly. So awesome. So let's go back a little more about the blogging. We've got some other yeah. people. Abigail says, what is the name of your guest? Oh, Abigail, you came in late. This is Mike Alton. Um, Mike Alton is a blogger and uh, works for Agora Pulse and has his own company, Social Media Hat. So we're talking about blogging and what blogging can do for you and what blogging means. So I'd like to um, hop back over. I love the brand ambassador stuff, you guys. But let's hop back over to blogging. Um, we know what it is. You can do videos. So you're saying it's content. So it can be yeah. a video. It can be written um, podcast. That's not really bl blogging. Yeah, well, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Audio. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't think about that as blogging. Yeah, because what you can do is you can create the audio content. Maybe that's all you want is the audio content. And then you can publish to your blog a summary, some show notes. Yeah. You can embed okay. a player. Um, or, you know, and I say blog, but that could be your website or you know wherever else that you want to publish. And so you can LinkedIn. you know start with the audio LinkedIn. content. I'm like, LinkedIn. <laughs> I put stuff Let's up talk there. about that. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Should you, should you publish to LinkedIn? And probably the, not all of them. Yes, I would should say you, just the relevant. Yes. Like, should you solely publish to LinkedIn? No. no, you don't ever want to rely on somebody else's platform. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, so you want to host it yourself. You want ownership of it, yet you can yeah. share it out on other platforms. Oh, yeah. You can totally share it out okay. to LinkedIn, to Facebook, and that sort of thing. But LinkedIn specifically has articles. what they used to call Pulse, right, where you can articles. create full-on article content inside LinkedIn, like a medium Right, or even like Facebook notes, even though Facebook kind of hides the notes for some reason. Yeah. Um, it's the same idea. You can, you can create an article content on those platforms. And there's good reasons to do that. Uh, there's good reasons to sometimes syndicate, which is to basically copy and paste an article that you've already published on your own site, okay. syndicate it to these other sites, or create some unique content for these other sites. But never do the, the other sites exclusively. Okay. Right, where I only ever publish to LinkedIn or I only ever publish to Medium because they can go away. True. They can They can just shut you off. Or the network can change. Okay. And if you don't think that that's possible, ask Vine users what happened to their content. <gasps> oh, Vine. That's right. Boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over 100 million people lost. Wow. All I don't know how many six-second videos. Some of them were for fun. Uh, but ask Zach King what that did for his business. Mm. Uh, where, you know, that's, that was it. He was, he spoke at Social Media Marketing World. Two years ago, because he was a familiar. fine superstar. Oh, okay. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Now, because he is a superstar, he just recreated himself right. on Instagram and YouTube, and, and he's amazing. He does amazing videos. But back then, this was like, I, I'm sure he was having heart palpitations for three weeks. Right. Trying to figure out, what am I going to do with the 10 million people that are following me on Vine? And Vine goes and bye bye. Me over now. That's kind of like what we have Periscope. There's so many platforms that pop up. We yeah. there's no guarantee of which one's going to be here. There's other platforms that are coming up, like Link. So I'm a LinkedIn strategist, right? That's right. that's right. what I do, and career coach. But there's these other platforms that are popping up, like Alignable referral, and they're oh, trying yeah. to be a referral thing. I don't. I'm not on those. That's a different topic. But I I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. um, so for social media marketing world this year. I volunteer and yep. Amy Aram and Victor and uh, Marissa, the four of us, we were volunteering. I was like, you guys, we should do recaps and we'll have content, relevant content. So we did a four week um, series of uh, mm. our favorite speakers and stuff. So we had four, each of us contributed a section. You know, we talked about one speaker and we did it every week and we posted that on LinkedIn, but I also put that on my website. Yeah. So. Yeah. So Perfect. I'm safe, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm safe, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, speaking of platforms, so Laura's asking, is there a good platform site to get started? The best mm-hmm. option is to start with your own WordPress self-hosted website. There you go, Laura. Use, use inexpensive hosting. You can go with Bluehost, uh, which is what I typically recommend. It's like $4 a month. You if go. you want to start a business and you can't afford $4 a month, yeah. keep working. <laughs> keep Don't quit your day job. Right. Uh, right? <laughs> you got to be able to invest a little bit of money. Right. Um, but take the time to do that. You can go to Bluehost, 4 bucks a month. It's paid annually, so you can get that deal. It's a little more expensive if you actually pay monthly. And there's just a big button, install WordPress. Perfect. There you go. Oh, you got to push. push. There the you button. go. Laura, go start Pick your blog. I can't wait to see it. Make sure you share it with me. Um, so we talked about videos and blogs, where to get started, because that's a big question for our audience. Um, I have a couple of questions, or Stephanie Lou did. Um, I don't know if she's watching right now. We we have like 60-something people like giving us hearts and, and, and high fives and stuff, which is great. Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> her questions were two parts. So one, comments. Do they matter? Like on LinkedIn, you know, people can yeah, comment. Yeah. So on my website, where my articles, I call them articles, that teacher yeah. professor side of me. Um, yeah, sure. But we just changed it to blog. Like we literally yeah. just changed it. I'm like, it's going to be a blog. I'm going to yeah. jump into that. So we just changed it to blog on my website. But do we want comments? Are they important? They can be. Right. So a lot of it is going to depend on the industry and, and, and the nature of your audience because comments can do a couple of things for you. First okay. of all, that's user generated content. Right. So if you get good conversations going in the comment section of your blog, that in itself has value. It has meaning. It has interest for your readers and if they go into the comments and they start reading this or participating that's creating additional content for your site that's helping your time on page that's getting other people to come back to your site so that's all helping your seo which is a wonderful Ah, thing that's what i was i was like do comments help when there's more engagement on that blog right does that help with the seo Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then there's a second more subtle thing that can happen, which is that people tend to ask questions in the comments. And, again, this depends on your content. Some of you, you know, the only comments you might get are great posts. I loved it. Thanks a lot, which is nice. Stokes our ego a little bit, uh, but that's all that that does. But when you get people asking more questions, they follow up and they say, I thought this was a great article, but could you help me understand this point? Sometimes that's something you can answer right there in, in the comments, and that helps that particular reader. Sometimes that gives you ideas for more content. Bingo. That's the one I like. When people yeah. ask a question, whether it's on video, like right now, yeah. your blog, at a networking event, at a conference, you need to save that, write it down, tell Siri to add it to your note section or something because that creates content for you. I learned oh, that yeah. one, but I forget that one, so thank you. Yeah, the the entire system that I teach for blogging, it uses um, a note-taking app. I prefer Evernote. You can use whatever you want, as long as you can organize by notebook and by individual notes. So, like, a Word doc is not a good system to to create blog content. um, So you use Evernote, like, on your computer? I use Evernote on my computer. And on my phone. So when I'm on the go, this is always with me. This is attached to me. So everywhere I go, I have access to Evernote, which means anytime I have an idea for a new blog post, it goes into my Evernote like that because I will forget it if I don't put it in Evernote right away. And that includes comments, whether it's on my blog post or a social media post or inside a community, whether it's a LinkedIn group or a Facebook group or something like that. If someone asks a great question, I put an Evernote. If I'm answering a question and I spend more than a couple sentences and more than five minutes answering that question, I finish it and then I copy and paste it and put an Evernote. I have entire blog posts that I wrote on a social platform as an answer to somebody else's question and then I just copied and pasted an Evernote, cleaned it up a little bit and said, hey, so-and-so was in the Google Plus community and asked this question. Here's my answer. Boom. Because more people want to know. Right. 
Okay, so you guys, Evernote, um, I'm using Google Docs right now for my blog. I have a blog folder and I put everything in there because I can access that from anywhere. Um, and I'm trying to use dr the Google Drive for everything so I can yeah. access it from everywhere and not this computer has just got too much stuff on it. It's time for a new computer. So it's, you'll find that if you are creating a lot of ideas for blog content, Google Docs inside a Google folder is a little more cumbersome. Okay. It's going to be a little more challenging for you to sift through those mm. ideas and in progress blog posts and think, okay, what do I feel like writing about today? Because one of the most important tenets I teach is to have time set aside on a regular basis just for writing. Yeah. Whether it's per day or per week or per month, that's up to you. I'm not going to tell you what you have to do with right. your time. But you, you need that time set aside because if you don't set aside the time, it's not going to happen. Absolutely. So for me, it's Saturday and Sunday afternoons when my little girls are sleeping. I was going to say, wait, you have two little girls. How does that happen? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're still, they're still taking naps. Now, oh, okay. When they get a little older, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, it's going to be like at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, or up earlier in the morning, right? But um, you know, for most of us, uh, it's it's actually morning. Uh, you know, you, you get up, you work out, you get to breakfast or whatever you're going to do, and then maybe you've got some time before you get into your day mm -hmm. that you can set that side of time that that time aside to write. Maybe just thirty minutes. It doesn't have to be a lot of right, time, right. particularly if it's every day. But the point is, whenever that time happens and now you sit down you know you're going to write well what are you going to write about you're going to go into your list of ideas list. Uh -huh. your list of in progress blogs and say okay well what do i feel like writing about this morning maybe i feel like writing about linkedin ads maybe i feel like writing about uh measuring I, success with linkedin yeah. maybe i feel like writing about my you know, favorite apps people laws <laughs> maybe there's something I have to write about. You know, maybe okay. that's that's going to take some precedence. Um, but if if it's kind of wide open, what you want to be able to do is quickly see all the ideas that you've already had, some of which you've already worked on. So you really like the way Evernote lays that out and is visually yeah, appealing. Because it's just a list of all the temporary titles that I've created. Ah. I used to use Evernote and then I stopped. I don't know why. Yeah. I just did. Um, Kimberly... <laughs> Thank you for that advice. I might have to look back into it. We'll see. Um, Kimberly has another question. What is the difference between categories and tags? So like on blogs, you see, I don't know if it's a tag or a category. Isn't the category the bigger picture and the tags are what could be? The yeah, other? essentially that's it. Now, as a reader of somebody else's blog, it's not necessarily going to be evident and you really don't care. But for your, this is for our own sanity, right? Okay. Categories are at a high level, and they have got to be very, very limited. You cannot have a dozen categories. That doesn't make sense. What are some of and, your categories that you use? Do you have categories? I do, and, and right now my categories are blogging, social media, and email. Okay. And, and, and that's actually too broad. Really? That's, that's, that's this oh. wide swath right. of everything that's within content marketing and it's too broad. So I'm going to be honing it down probably to strictly blog and I, I might not write about social media at all anymore. I haven't, I haven't quite brought myself to totally eliminate it because I enjoy doing it. But I know for a fact that my audience today is just, it's still too broad. Um, so that when I write about one of these topics, when I write about Facebook, I'm only interesting a portion of my audience, and I want to create a content that I know is going to interest a sizable percentage of my audience. So are you so saying don't push yeah. it down? Because social media is broad, but Facebook is a little more specific. But to take it to be even more specific, it would be like Facebook ads or right. Facebook groups or Facebook right. pages, right? Yeah. That's like really niching it down. Yeah, yeah. And I mean there's 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 pros and cons to each approach, particularly in this space when we're talking about social media. Right. Anytime we talk about focusing on a particular platform or a particular aspect of a platform, uh we're 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 putting our future at a little bit of jeopardy, right? Because that could change. Chatbots could go away next year. Right. And if I've created 
you know, a blog that's all about chatbots and they go away, then, you know, I'm SOL. But for other industries, that's not that's not nearly as likely. Um, you know, so for those of you listening at home, and again, um, what you're going to want to do as entrepreneurs with your own business, your categories, generally speaking, are need, they need to match up with your services right. or products. Right. So, again, that's going to be really limited. You're not going to have 20 different vastly different services you're going to have a few very specific things that you do for people and you want to file all of your content into those buckets it's got to fit in one of those buckets where it's not worth writing about okay so the categories are the the uh we call it the balcony and the dance floor down here would be the tags and so the tags are blog specific then right with that yeah, they're just the topics that, okay. that you're that you're covering in that specific piece of content. Okay. So, you know, to give again from my own example, let's let's say you know social media is the category, and then I'm and I've written an article about Facebook ads. So now my tags are Facebook, Facebook advertising, and advertising. Okay. Um, how many tags should you have? Is there like you know Instagram is crazy, right? You put like twenty uh-huh. hashtags. So on blogging. Is there a minimum, a maximum, how many tags we should have? Is it just whatever is adequate? Well, it's whatever makes the most sense. Okay. And as long as you're consistent, right, you don't want to say Facebook ads on one article and then Facebook advertising on another article because now you've created two different tags for the same thing, but your site's not going to understand that, and your audience isn't going to understand that. And the whole point of categories and tags is to give people a way to click a button Mm. that will show them everything you've written on that particular topic. Okay. And so you do want to be strategic and tactical about how you create and how you use your categories and tags. Do you create, have you created your, your categories and tags even before you started blogging? Do you start your blogging? This is probably a question that people ask, like, well, should I, I know I want to write about these two yes. topics. So do yeah. I create my tags that I'm going to use so I'm always consistent? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You can go beyond that with tags, which is fine. Like uh, uh, this week, I had a guest post uh, from Michaela Underhall. She works for Nimble, the oh. CRM. Mm-hmm. And so that particular article was about influencer marketing So and social media. So it was, you know, social media was the category. Influencer marketing was one of the tags. And I put Nimble as one of the tags. Okay. I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned Nimble in any of the posts. So that might be a tag that consists of one piece of content. But you never know. Um, so those those kinds of on-the-fly tags are fine. Okay. Good to know. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm going to ask you this question. You can decline it or you can play along <laughs> and answer. Are you guys phone ready? Phone a friend. I, right? I'm super a phone a friend. Grab your notes or your phone, right? Look it up on Evernote. Um, so I want to ask you, what is your worst blog that you've ever done? <laughs> so what I mean by worst, let's define that. It di- you went back and read it and it didn't make sense. You you got no engagement or, you know, g- just define that in your own sense. And then what you think, <laughs> Right. Got to go with the good, the bad, and the ugly. And what was your best blog? Like, what what blog are you so proud of or it did something for you? Okay. <laughs> well, it's funny that you mentioned good, bad, and ugly because all three exist when it okay. comes to blog content. And it, I actually, I like this question because... I am just like all of you. I, I have had mistakes. I have terrible content sometimes. Um, you, you never want to compare your beginning to someone else's middle, right? So, right. you know, if you look at my, my current blog stats and you look at some of the content I've created recently, you might think, oh my gosh, I could never create amazing content like Mike, right? You can. You can. You've so, been doing this. That, that's really great. Um, you yeah. follow, do, do you follow Damian Ross at all from social media? Oh, yeah. So his yeah. whole video series is like, yeah. don't compare yourself. Everyone puts everything out on social media that, oh, I just made $10,000 and I'm speaking here. You know, we, we put all that good stuff out, but Damian reminds us that, hey, you know what? That's only this much of their business. So I appreciate that you're saying that because I did look at some of your blogs. I'm like, oh, he's really good. 
I'm like, yeah, well, and Damien's a great example. He's on like day 100 and something, right? 150. So that means, oh yeah, he's over. He's over 100 days of yeah. of doing just this video series. Go back to day one. Go back to day right. two. They're not as polished, right? Right. They're not as well edited as day 102. Because he's got that experience. Right. I often talk about a blogging muscle, which is a kind of a fun uh, I like analogy. that. I, I have like a visual now. It's kind <laughs> of like my mind and my arm together is this blogging muscle. I like it. Oh, yeah. The content that I create today is exponentially better than the content that I was creating six years ago. I guarantee it. Now, that doesn't mean I still don't create doozies of terrible pieces of content. Um, but like I said, there's good, bad, and there's ugly. We'll start with the ugly first okay. because the ugly content that I have created in the past and I've created ugly content doesn't see the light of day. It's so ugly, I get through it and I recognize that it's ugly and it doesn't get published. It goes into what I call a burn bag, which means it sits in my Evernote. <laughs> Yet you keep it. You keep you, it, though. I, I, Is it a reminder? I'm a hoarder. Okay. I right. was like, well, why do you keep it if it's so bad? I, I keep it because I'm a hoarder, but at some point I get tired of looking at it. At some point I realize this is Mike, this is really, really ugly. You're never going to publish this. You okay. shouldn't ever publish this. And so I move it into a different notebook within Evernote where I keep the uglies. Okay. Um, there's also, there's also ideas for blog posts in there that you might for have whatever like reason, good idea I know I'm never going to write. Maybe okay. it's not. They're not, like I'm not writing about Google Plus anymore. I used to write a lot, but I'm not never going to write about Google Plus again, unless somehow they it magically decide to reinvent that network and <laughs> it comes back. But um, there was I had a, I had dozens of pieces of content planned to write ah. about Google Plus that at, at some point I just shelved it all because there's no longer any interest. Right. Um, there's networks that are totally gone, like Blab and Vine. <laughs> I had things <coughs> to write about those networks. <clears throat> so that's gone. Okay. Those are the ugly pile. Stuff I'm never going to write about or stuff that I wrote. Like, ah, I wrote an article once. Here I go, sharing what's not supposed to see the light of day. I wrote a Dear John <laughs> letter, a Dear John formatted letter to a just kind of the, like a pretend avatar person who has a terrible blog. I thought, what if someone's got a really bad blog and I'm writing them a letter telling them why I'm breaking up with them as a subscriber because they're well, making all like these the idea. with their blog. Oh, doesn't it sound like a wonderful it idea? It does. Like, yeah, it, it sounds terrible. Kind of cool. It was a terrible, <laughs> terrible article. I like the concept. So it'll never be published. <laughs> okay. So there's that. That's the ugly. Now the blab, the bad posts, and I'm not talking about just when I was starting because they're bad because I'm new and everybody everybody goes through that. I'm like Charlie Brown and Lucy, okay. because I like movies and I like TV shows. Okay. And I think everybody else should like the same movies and TV shows that I like. So I want to work them into my content, and I want to tell you why your marketing <laughs> team should be like the Justice League and be able to, you know, take on these huge adventures and fights and and win the battles just like okay. Justice. And so I've created content like that over and over and over again, and they're all bad. They're all bad. Why do you think they're bad? Is it because you're because you're duplicating it, like you're no, no. It's because that technique of trying to create an analogy wow. or a metaphor between a real world business thing and a pretend world movie doesn't work. It's okay. a trope, as they call it, and and people are tired of that trope, and it's really hard to make that interesting and timeless. timeless. So. I think that's an important word, timeless. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm struggling to think of a very specific example. I've done some Star Wars ones, of course. Because um, if you haven't been able to tell from my background, Star Wars is part of my shtick. Oh. But I've done some others for some other movies um, or, or TV shows. I, I did, uh, I, I wrote about Beauty and the Beast, the new one, uh, and how that was repurposing. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's not good. Okay. Uh, well, tell us. Tell article. us about. Um, and Amanda's watching. She said, "Hi, Mike and Mary. Great to see you both on live. Hey, Amanda, girl. Glad you could join us. Amanda Robinson. Um, She's awesome. She is. I love Amanda. And 
audience, you guys are going to get to see Amanda because she's going to be on the Facebook Live show in the future. Woo! She just said yes today. Did she know it? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know it. Hey, Amanda, guess what? You're going to be on the show. Seat. You're going to be here, girl. <laughs> No, she said yesterday. We just have to lock down the date. Awesome. So, Mike, tell us about what your favorite or best blog is and why. Yeah. So I, there's there's a few out there that I've really enjoyed that have performed well, which is always one of the barometer right. success, right? Well, what do <laughs> other people think about the content? Um, and, and it's funny that we mentioned Vine because it was an article about Vine. And I actually talk about this when I'm, when I'm teaching blogging from the stage. I talk about this article specifically. It's a great case study in newsjacking where you're actually writing about something that's happening in the moment and you're okay. sharing with your audience why they should care, what they should do. So in October of 2016, Vine published a blog post that said important news about Vine. It was late on a Thursday afternoon. I was like, what's this about? And they were announcing that they were shutting down Vine. Oh, crap. And they were, they were letting, this is how they were letting their users know that you've got three months to live and then we're done. And so as I read this short blog post, I knew my readers were going to want to know more because I'd written about Vine. It was one of the top eight social networks at the time, uh, in terms of like, you know, monthly users and everything. So I pumped out a blog post that said, Hey, this is happening. And, and I actually, the title of the blog post was, um, what's, What's happening to Vine? And uh, I summarized their blog post, and then I filled in whatever information I could as to, okay, like, what are your other options? Because Vine's mm. not going to tell you you can go to Instagram, but I can tell you. You, could, right. you can take those six-second videos and upload them to Instagram or upload them to YouTube and so on. So I walked through all that in my article. It hit 30,000 page views in, in a day. Get out. Because I broke that news, nobody because was following it was relevant. the Vine blog. It was in, it was like right. It was happening right then. It was a, yeah. right then. If yeah, you can it, get I on top it. of content of something Perfectly. that's just getting released, and you can take that and make it your own and spin it and spit it out that same day, like within six hours, you're golden. Like if you can yeah. do that. It was awesome. And then what, but, but what happened is nobody else really wrote about it at that point because I'd already covered everything. So I was the number one search result for what's going on with what? Vine, what's happening with Vine. And that continued. It continues to this day. I am still the number one search result for what happened to Vine. Now, I changed the name, but the, I changed the title after Vine now? actually closed down. It's now past tense. What happened to Vine? Ah. And I added uh, Twitter shut it down or Twitter closed it down, I don't remember. And I kept adding to the article as Vine released more information. Oh, we're going to let you export your Vines and we now have an app. We're not getting rid of the Vine app but it's just a camera and you can publish to twitter and i added all of that so that i, I gotta interrupt you right there because yeah. that brings up another question for our listeners do you go back and edit blogs yeah. and you yeah. just answer that well like heck yeah you go in and update them add things to them because i've seen that like on um i don't know where daily muse i just i've seen him on some other uh blog channels where it says updated update Yes. Yeah, that's why. Okay. And yeah, then that, that's why. And then it brings and this it is, back. That's one of the big, beautiful things about blog content where it has an advantage over video or right. audio. We can't come I, back I, and I, edit this later. No, <laughs> that's not going to happen. We can take out, but we can't put back in. Yeah. So I, I was able to expand that article and help more people. And, and, and that's this is, cool. I'm getting to the reason why it's my favorite. The, the success of the article aside, I mean, big people, Michael Hyatt was sharing this article, wow. uh, which was huge. Wow. But the biggest and the best compliment that I've ever gotten was on this particular article. It was in the comments. Some gal came in four months after I published it. Vine is now shut down completely. Okay. And she was trying to figure out why. She didn't know why. So she did a Google search. Oh. What happened to Vine? She came up with my article and she's reading it. And this is what she said in the comments. She said, as I was reading your article, I kept having questions. And as I continued <gasps> to read the article, you kept answering my questions as though you were in my head. And this is the most amazing article I've ever read in my oh. life. It's like, oh, Aww. let's all wonderful. take an awe moment. Aww. Thank you. 
that's, and that's why I do it, is to help right. people. And, you know, it's not everybody articulates it as well as this particular reader did. Uh, and not every article is successful uh, at doing what I wanted to accomplish with that particular article. But it happens. And the more I do it, the more content that I create and the more content that you create, the more often you'll have that kind of success, that kind of experience. Now, if I was selling a service and that particular piece of content was related to the service that I was selling, do you think that particular reader would have been a buyer? Yeah, because you were, uh, yeah, you were providing value. You were providing yeah. um, information that she needed, and you were the one providing it. So when she had another question on something else, and it, it was a service, yeah, she'd be all yeah. over that. That's a great story. I love that you shared the ugly, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because that's what I always say: <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we have Valerie Fain joined. We're in no relationship because you know Mary Fain Brandt, Valerie Fain. We tried to figure out if we were related. <laughs> but we're not because there's not a lot of fames in the world. Um, she says she has, I have a blog on WordPress. My best blog post that got thousands of hits was because I had photographed a rare car we had and it was in the photo and I tagged it. Ah. So having something Very in the cool. photo that um, and tagging that. What kind of car Images was it, Valerie? Images are crucial. <laughs> every blog post that you ever publish and everybody listening Okay. Please pay attention because I will go check your blogs next week and I will look for this. Every blog post that you publish, if you aren't already doing this from this point on, I'll okay. give you a pass on your, on your old posts. So all your new content, it's got to have at least one featured image. And by featured image, oh. I mean it's got to be a decent size. Oh, okay. Usually landscape. I prefer 1024 by 512 because if I do that, on every piece of content. Anytime anybody shares my content, whether it's me or you or any other reader, uh -huh. they post it to uh -huh. Facebook, they post it to Twitter, they post it to LinkedIn, or they post it to Google Plus, uh -huh. the link preview will look the way I want it to look. So what were the dimensions again? 1024 by? 1024 by 512. That's a two to one ratio. Oh, it is. And it's big enough so that you get the wide link preview. Now, uh -huh. if you've ever paid attention, really pay attention to how content is shared and how it appears on search on uh, social media, Facebook is the best. If Facebook can find a picture, but it's a small one, then you get a little square here yeah. and some information to the right and your picture's tiny. But if they can find a big picture, you get this nice, beautiful preview right. with the title and the description below it. Okay. That's what you want because you want a nice picture because that we're entices visual. people, yeah. tells a little bit of the story, gets them interested in your content, and gets them to click the button I to like go that. through. Okay, so everyone, the the picture, the image should be 1024 by 512. That's really important. Um, we can go back after your iMic and make sure that we put that in the show notes. Yeah. So any and any links, um, I've got people asking, they want links to your social media site. <laughs> we'll have to go, we, you guys, I should have said this at the beginning. So Mike and I will go back in later tomorrow because he's probably got to get some sleep, you know, because it's... Not, it's almost eight o'clock here. It's like 10 o'clock where he's at. But yeah. Mike and I will go back in and we'll respond to your questions. I know there's some people that want to get in uh, a hold of you and they want your social media leaks. And we put all that in, in the event. So you can jump over to the event on my Facebook page and get that information. But Mike and I will go back in. Please Absolutely. continue to ask your questions, you know, specific questions, and we'll go in and answer those. And it is almost 8 o'clock, so I don't like to do anything really over an hour. Um, I think I've kept you long enough. Uh, Valerie just said it was a 55 Chevy Del Rey. I don't know what that is. I'm not a car person. But yeah, you got yay. Um, so, Mike, why don't you tell people... Um, so you're talking about you have a class or you teach like how to blog. Do you, is that available for people? Uh, yes and no. Okay. So um, there's, there's a couple of things that I do today and there's a couple of things that are becoming later in the year. So right now today I, I, I occasionally do live presentations and workshops. Okay. Uh, it's like next week I'm going into our uh, PBS station here in St. Oh. Louis and doing a full day workshop uh, for them on, on creating content and social media nice. and live video and, and all of that. And of course, people can hire me for one-on-one -on -one stuff a little bit. I have, I work for Garpals full time, right. so pretty busy. Um, 
But later this year, uh, there'll be a membership group and possibly a course uh, where blogging is going to be a, a central figure. Um, so, but until then, go to the socialmediahead.com. There I you have go. So much content. I have how to start a blog. Boom, takes you right there. In fact, Sarah Lopez, these, that's yours. Go to his. If you go to media. the socialmediahead.com, uh-huh. you'll see blogging as one of the main categories right at the top. Start there. Okay. Perfect. I could see you doing a course on that. Um, so we've got people here. Valerie saying thank you. Paula said great show. Thanks, Mary and Mike. Laura said thank you. So um, that's awesome. So you guys, all his information is in the event on the Facebook page. And we will go back in and interact with you and answer any questions. But Mike is, in my in my humble opinion, one of the best bloggers out there and just a joy to like know as a person. So <laughs> thank you, Mike, for um, taking you, the time. This was awesome. Like, I'm like, check. I got, I got <laughs> Mike Alton on my show. I'm like, woo! Um, and all the tech stuff worked because... Yeah. Mike was here with me before you guys were. Let me just tell you, we had to reboot a couple systems because, you know, tech, you can really count on it. Never, ever, said anybody. Right. No kidding. So, you guys, thank you all um, for joining us tonight. Um, remember, you can find me here uh, at Mary Fane Brandt Coaching and Consulting the first and third Wednesdays of the month at 7 p.m. And if you're interested, you can join. I've recently opened up my private Facebook group. It's the LinkedIn Bakery serving up bite-sized tips. Um, and we're going to be doing some fun things in there. It's a small membership of around 220 people. I am opening that up. It was only for past and current clients, but we're going to open that up and have some fun things like a LinkedIn pod day coming up in September. And if you don't know what a pod is, Ask that question to me and I'll answer it. Okay. High fives, hugs and high fives. Ciao.